I would like to thank uh, Oxford Nanopore Technologies for giving me the opportunity to share some of our results and also uh, to share some ideas. I'm a wet lab biologist, so I would like to emphasize this 10 minutes a little bit about the uh, library, library prep approach and the DNA challenges which we encounter. Um, yeah, we uh, have stepped in in 2014 in the early access program of the uh, Minion, Minion. And um, yeah, that was not really spectacular on that moment, just uh, sequencing lab DNA and some back clones. But finally, in 2016, we started really with uh, minion sequencing. And um, in these days, we, last year, we have sequenced uh, the genome of a, a plant fungus of uh, 54 MB. And we were really happy with the results. Um, in 2017, so this year, already in only a couple of months, we really started with uh, a lot of work. Um, uh, we already sequenced now the genomes of two insects, which are important for uh, plant breeding, and we uh, started sequencing the melon genome. Uh, and hopefully I will tell you this afternoon a little bit about that. Um, and also we have some uh, sequenced some back uh, uh, clones. Um, yeah, I mean, it's like a play garden at Keychain. We recently also obtained uh, the uh, Promethean, and uh, it's standing there. We already have done the burn-in with Labda, and uh, we are really happy with uh, the machine. And for sure, we will sequence this year a number of crop genomes and also the, the large size. So we are look, really looking forward to that. Um, and then finally, yeah, the, the play garden, the Fotrex, it's also standing in our uh, sequencing lab. And uh, yeah, we aim to use the Fotrex speci specifically for library preparations of plant genomic DNA. So, uh, and uh, yeah, lucky I, uh, I am involved in all these uh, beautiful machines. Uh, plant genomes, I'm not going into detail because it was already addressed yesterday very clearly. They are uh, often large, ranging from 100 MB towards hundreds of gigabases. Um, and correlated to that, the genomes are often very complex, containing large repetitive regions. Uh, heterozygosity, also an important uh, problem, not really in the inbred material, which is often used for sequencing, but uh, ma uh, ma many cases in, in wild uh, races. And the uh, plant genomes, uh, crop genomes also, are uh, often polyploid. So all these things uh, are quite uh, uh, challenges for plant biologists, and for sure if you are working in a plant uh, 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 breeding company like Hygiene. So we have to, uh, to tackle this also with nanopore sequencing. And yeah, that is the promise of the long read sequencing. I will not go into detail because we already, I think we are convinced that long reads will resolve uh, genome complexity to a certain region. Um, but this is a nice depiction of uh, the, the effect of uh, using longer reads and to uh, be able to resolve genome complexity. If you use uh, small reads of about 100, this is the E. coli uh, genome of 5, uh, 5 MB. If you use uh, small reads, of course, then you get a lot of contest, which is depicted by green, green uh, uh, circles, and with a lot of uh, possible interactions between the contests. So it's what we call in Dutch, uh, kind of, uh, the biophematicians call in Dutch, an hagelslag assembly. Uh, however, if you increase the read length, then you see that the number of contests is already decreasing, and also the number of possible interactions between the contests. And uh, in this case, if you use uh, uh, pack bio size the reads, 5 KB, then you can make an assemble only with one contest. So uh, we compare it in, at Keychain often, which is often used, uh, like uh, with a jigsaw puzzle. Large pieces enable us to puzzle uh, much faster and uh, with men, uh, lesser complex than with uh, small pieces. And on the other hand, it's when you have a beautiful picture, in fact, it's a little bit silly to make a puzzle out of it. So if you can, geno if you can sequence a whole genome or a whole chromosome, that would be better, but now we are taking uh, much effort in order to make our DNA first smaller sized in order to put it on the sequence. Plant cells, it's a little bit different than mammalian cells or human cells or even a little bit of uh, fungal cells. Plant cells are really challenging. They contain this very rigid cell wall containing a lot of uh, metabolites 
uh, pectins, hemicellulose. It's a really rigid wall. If you want to break that wall, you, need, uh, you have to do, apply a lot of force to it. And that's, of course, a little bit in contradiction with what you want. You want to get the DNA out of the nuclei as contact intact as possible. So it's a, a really a challenge, this uh, cell wall. And then if you are true, then you have these secondary metabolites. Plants are full with it. You already heard it yesterday. Uh, all to, for, uh, mainly for plant defense or adaptations to environmental stresses, uh, like polyphenols. Sometimes we have uh, got uh, DNA uh, samples, and it was also mentioned, which are really brown in color, for example, from cotton, a really challenge. And when these DNA, uh, when these secondary metabolites are able to come into contact with, uh, for example, uh, genomic DNA, then you get often an irreversible reaction. And somehow we have the impression that it influences the efficiency of sequencing. Um, but you also have in the cytoplasm and in the vacuo are long polysaccharides molecules. Some species like sugar beet, it is already in the name, are really rich. Other species do have, contain, contain low levels. However, it can disturb uh, finally the, the quality of the DNA. And then finally, the presence of chloroplasts and mitochondria. And somehow, of course, when you are interested in nuclear DNA sequences, you want to deplete for these uh, organelles. However, if you do a, a rigid DNA extraction, you will also, uh, let's say, uh, lyse these organelles and get this, this DNA mixed with your DNA. So the reality with plant DNA isolation is there is no generic protocol. We get a lot, a broad variety of crops at Keatin, and we have to adapt every time we have to adapt. Uh, Lucky we have a kind of basic protocol, so we can do small adaptations on basis of that protocol, but it's not generic. And another uh, important issue is that we think there should be more investment in next generation DNA isolation, extraction. It's the start of the route, and uh, yeah, what you bring in, you get out. So that's already uh, uh, important. And that's also what we see in, uh, at KG. Um, the effect of DNA quality on, and on read uh, sequencing uh, is depicted in this graph here. Um, we have three types of uh, DNA extracts. Uh, melon, which was already uh, isolated in 2016 because we expected the Promethean arriving in that year, so I was really enthusiastic and started to isolate a large bunch of DNA. Um, we sequence in the, uh, at the start this year, so in January, we started sequencing that DNA uh, uh, just by, with the uh, minions um, in order to see whether it was good DNA. In fact, for all the DNA samples over here, the quality scores are pretty good. Uh, Nanodrop give good uh, spectrophotometric values. Uh, the DIN scores on the tape stations are very good for the uh, DNA and later on a little bit uh, lesser good for the libraries, but all comparable. So we have no indications that there are quality difference between the samples. Uh, if you compare then the DNA what was extracted for more than a half year ago in 2016, and you compare it with a fresh sample, and you compare it with a sample which is even more purified, I will go into detail a little bit later, then in fact you don't see any effect, or not hardly no effect, if you compare the high quality reads, so with a Q score of larger than six, uh, compared to the total number of reads. So that looks very uh, uh, sample independent. However, if you look then to the if you zoom in to the reads which are longer than 5 KB, so the good quality reads, then we saw uh, large differences. For example, a sample which has been isolated freshly is, uh, uh, gives almost double more larger reads than this older sample, although the uh, QCs are uh, comparable. And in fact, if we even purify this sample a little bit more, with uh, the Boreal Genomics Aurora system, we see an even more increase in the number of uh, larger reads uh, of high quality. So obviously, the QCs are not giving a, a very high predictive value with respect to the sequence output. Um, yeah, and that is what I said. So we decided for our melon sequencing uh, to use only DNA, which is quite fresh, or within uh, one uh, month old and which is uh, pu further purified with the Aurora system. 
And somehow the Aurora system, I mean, there are some components present in the DNA sample, and we think that these DNA are these uh, components which cannot be uh, measured with, uh, with our QC devices, uh, have some negative influence on DNA over time. So um, these are the conclusions from this uh, experiment. So we realized we only go for DNA, which is uh, further purified. This is species dependent because we also sequence other crops with the minion this year with uh, the same uh, age of samples. And then it's not needed to be purified further with the uh, Aurora. So that's a, a difference. Um, this is something what we already have done last year in 2016. It was presented also here in uh, London Calling 2015. It's the same accounts a little bit for some fungal species. So in this case, Rhizoctonia is a fungus. And if you isolate the DNA, you purify it with the Boreal system, and you also site select, you get, a kind, uh, you get a smear of around 60, 70, 80 kb in size. And if you put that DNA, you use that DNA for shearing, and uh, you sequence it. These are three different libraries uh, representing three different sizes. This is the unsheared library. And then you see that there is no uh, correlation between the, uh, the fragment size and the read size. So somehow, uh, the DNA is not sequenced fully. And we think that it really has to do with the DNA quality and not with the uh, sequence technology. Um, so. Um, the, although we did not get the sequence uh, read lengths, uh, uh, what we expected with respect to the fragment size, we were able to sequence the whole uh, genome of this fungus. And here it is depicted the effect of using longer reads in order to get a better assembly. What you see here is that we have taken the 75% of the longest reads. Uh, and we did do a, a fast assembly, and we compare it with the assembly on the same way with 75% of the uh, smallest reads. The number of bases are comparable. And what you see is that the longest reads gave almost the double the size uh, of uh, the context. So it is, of course, beneficial to use longer reads for sure if you have more complex genomes. Um, so. We want to hunt for long reads, and long reads are up to 100 KB. How to hunt? The only way we see now is that we get rid of the secondary metabolites before we lyse the nuclei. So, because all these interactions which can maybe happen, we don't want to have them. So that means that we have to isolate, that our generic workflow will be uh, to isolate first the uh, nuclei from the plant cells, we have good experience with that and good uh, cell biologists which can do that. And then isolate lysine nuclei, isolate the DNA. Uh, the, the advantage of having a nuclei is that you can hopefully wash away all kind of com compounds which you don't want to have interaction with, with your DNA. And if needed, you can use then further purification either with the Boreal uh, Aurora system or even with the Sage ALS, which we will get on demo for uh, next uh, month. So it's another toy in the lab. Um, but finally, of course, we would like to hunt for ultra long reads. So make a base size. Um, that would be a, a very nice uh, gift this year. Uh, but then we need to follow another approach because everything what's in solution will break into parts of 100, 200 KB. So how to hunt for these long reads? Of course, again, uh, isolate nuclei, but then embed them in a, in a, in a matrix, like agrose. Uh, uh, lyse the nuclei, so you get this megabase size DNA in the agrose. And then the challenge began, because uh, how to get this DNA into your flow cell. So on a gentle way to get rid of the agrose, uh, we have some, already have done some experience with it. And also in this case, the uh, Aurora system can uh, help us with that and then use this DNA for the uh, final sequencing. However, if you do the, all this, you have to, if you are going to carry out all this work, then it's, you get a kind of uh, furlough. It's uh, um, uh, because the sequencing capacity, for sure, with the Promethean, is, it's huge. And uh, w that means that we can sequence a number of um, uh, genomes in one Promethean, but that means that we also have to do a lot of work in the lab in order to get this ultra-pure, ultra-long uh, DNA. Uh, very fast, we already have do the sequencing on the old-fashioned way with melon. 
uh, around uh, 13 uh, flow cells, which is depicted here, different conditions. This is from the older DNA, this is from uh, fresh DNA. Um, the output is uh, range a lot between the flow cells, but to some extent it also uh, correlates with the input material, the, the amount of uh, uh, library. The largest was 12.5 kb, and I have to admit that this was derived from 2.1 million of reads, and I got, in fact, I have a, a picture of it, but I did not show it. It was from 2.6 million of reads, but I lost 500,000, uh, uh, so that's, uh, I'm not that handy with computers. So, um, um, and the sizes, it's also very uh, ranging, but what we see, in fact, is that if we have the fragment length, which is in this row, if we use fragment length longer than 25 kb, we end up uh, with at least 12 kb of uh, read length. So that is our starting point for future uh, genome, uh, plant genomes. Then, uh, currently, the, the, the uh, sequence data which we had, which was already a uh, 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 base code, is rebase code with the new Albacore version. It's still going on, or it's just finished this week. Uh, but we already have done uh, some flow cells uh, rebase code, and this is the, the comparison from only one read. Uh, the old version versus the new version, and what you see indeed that uh, long homopolymer regions are resolved very nicely. Also differences, the, the indels are resolved, and even long repeats are uh, resolved with the new albacore. So we are really happy with that. Um, then our dot on the horizon with respect to genome assemblies. Um, of course, uh, we, uh, we think that uh, uh, with Oxford Nanopore technology, genome sequencing is, will, is already a commodity. And uh, our aim for genome assemblies is that we will uh, generate platinum genome assemblies from plants. And that is by extraction of ultra-pure, eventually ultra-high molecular weight DNA, on a, as generic as possible, because that uh, would be uh, time efficient, on a high throughput manner, manner, so without too many uh, funnels in the root, uh, in order to generate ultra-long reads, so even in combination with long reads, if the youth is uh, 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 good with that, and then uh, which should enable us to give, to resolve genome complexity, to resolve uh, polyploidy and heterozygosity, and finally to create our crops of, uh, for the future. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, finally, I have to thank some people, people, Alexander Wittenberg, he's also here in the audience, and people uh, from the wet lab, people, the ICT, uh, very important, and also, in our case, the, the bioinformaticians which were involved in the project. Thank you very much. <laughs>